Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. This is Ms. Linda. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve uh, one of the IB uh, past uh, paper uh, exam. This question is related to SNES law, uh, critical angle, total internal reflection, and topic three heats. Now, before we uh, solve the question, just recap a little bit SNES law. If you remember SNES law, the formula for SNES law is sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 equals v2 velocity in the second medium divided by v1 velocity in the first medium. Um, this equal lambda 2 wavelength uh, in the second medium divided by the wavelength in the first medium. And this equals to n1 index of refraction in the first medium divided by index of refraction in the second medium. For a critical angle, a critical angle, the conditions I, uh, I, that light should go from high index of refraction to lower index of refraction. So N1 should be greater than N2. At the critical angle, this is a normal. And this is the incident ray. At the critical angle, uh, the refracted ray is exactly at the surface between the two uh, medium. So suppose medium one, let's say it's water. And medium two, it's air. N1 for water is 1.33 and for air is always one. So N1 always should be greater than N2. N2. For total internal reflection, the angle of incident is greater than the critical angle. So condition uh, conditions to have total internal refraction, refle uh, reflection. So here, this is the incident angle and the light will be totally internally reflected inside the same medium. So if theta one greater than the critical angle in one greater than in two, I will have here total internal internal reflection, total internal reflection. OK, the other thing as well um, I would like to uh, revise is uh, heat. So. So if I have um, a piece of ice and um, the initial temperature for ice, suppose is negative 20 or negative 50, and I start heating it up here, I'm going to draw relationship between heat, Q, in joule, and temperature in Celsius or Kelvin. The initial temperature suppose is negative 20 degree Celsius and I start heating this ice up. Till it reach the melting temperature, which is zero. Zero temperature at the melting temperature. The ice temperature will stay will remain constant. Would it increase? Why it will remain constant? Because the ice now all the ice will start to melt to water. So it will use this energy for melting. So the amount of heat here, Q, will equal mass of this ice times specific heat capacity for the ice times the change in temperature, final minus initial. And here, Q will be M, mass of this ice times latent heat of fusion. Here, I don't have any increase in the temperature. After that, the temperature will start to increase again. It will, so here we have MC delta T, and then it will stay, remain constant. So here we have M 
times latent heat of vaporization because all of this energy will be used to break down the bonds between the molecules and now all water now here have water phase will become all of them to vapor. So let's go back to the question. Here we have light goes from first medium air, second medium here it's ice. Ice, this is the second medium. This one, theta one, so first medium air, this is medium one, second medium, second medium ice, this is medium two. And this one, this angle is theta two, theta two. The velocity in the first medium air, velocity of light is the speed of light in vacuum, which is three times 10 to the power eight meter per second. Now the question is calculate the speed of light inside the second medium, inside the ice. So I need V2. So Snell's law, sine theta two over sine theta one equals V2 over V1. Sine theta two is 33 divided by sine theta one is 46 will equal V2 over 3 times 10 to the power 8. Now cross multiplication. So V2 will be 3 times 10 to the power 8 times sine 33 divided by sine 46. And this will give us 2.3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Meter per second. B, show that no light emerged from the side AB. No light emerged from the side AB. Now here I have a light, if I continue the path of this light, will be incident of this side, on, on this side. Now here I have two options. Since the first medium is, is ice, a light is already inside the ice and it will go to the second medium, which is air. So first medium is ice. This is medium one. Medium two is air. This is medium two. Index of refraction of ice is greater than the index of refraction of air. Ice is like what water is 1.33. So when light goes from higher index of refraction to lower index of refraction, okay, I will have two options. Either a light will have total internal friction or it will pass and it will pass through and it will get uh, refracted. Now, when, when this will happen, I have to find theta critical first. If the angle of incident is greater than theta critical, I will have total internal reflection. So first thing, I have to find theta one, and then what is theta a critical? So we're going to use geometry here. If I continue, this one is right triangle. This is the angle here is 90, so I need theta one. The total angle of a triangle is 180. So Theta one will be 180 minus 33 plus 90. So theta one will be 180 minus 33 plus 90, because if I add them all, I should give 180. And this will equal 57 degrees. This is the, the angle of incident. Now I have to find the critical angle. So the formula for a critical angle, sine theta critical, will equal N2 over N1. N2 over N1. And I know, I know it's also based from Snell's law, it's V1 over V2. Now the speed of light in the first medium, which is ice, first medium is ice, is 
2.3 times 10 to the power 8, we just calculated here, divided by the speed of flight in air is a 3 times 10 to the power 8. This and this we cancel. Okay, I need theta critical, so take sine inverse. So theta critical will be sine inverse of 2.3 divided by 3 will give me 50.1 degree. So you notice theta 1 here. This is theta 1. Is greater than the critical angle. So I will have total internal reflection. Theta 1 is greater than the critical angle. So we will have total internal internal reflection. So the light, the ray of light will be here. Totally internal reflection inside the ice itself. It will not pass through the side AB. And this is what I want to prove. I need to prove that there is no light emerges from the side AB. I will have total internal reflection. OK, now. Second, uh, uh, second part of the question. D. It's uh, on topic three. Heat. Each side of the ice cube is point seventy five milli a meter. Each side of the cube. Each side of the cube is point seventy five meter. The initial temperature of the ice is negative twenty. So this is initial temperature. Final temperature. It's the melting temperature zero. I have the latent heat of effusion. This is LF. The specific heat capacity C and density of I. Why give you density? Because I need to find the mass. So from the formula, rho equals mass divided by volume. Mass will equal density times the volume. Density is 920. Volume, it's a cube, so it will be 0.75 cube. This is a density. This is the volume of a cube. And this will give me 388.125 kilogram. This is M mass. Now I need Q. Q. Q will equal MC times delta T plus M times the latent heat of fusion. Mass of the ice 388.125. Specific heat capacity is 2.1 times 10 to the power 3 kilo is 10 to the power 3 times delta T final minus initial final is zero minus initial is negative 20. Negative and negative it will become positive. Plus M times L latent heat of fusion M 388.125 times 330 kilo kilo it means 10 to the power 3. If you put this on the calculator, you should get 1.4 times 10 to the power 8 and the unit of energy or heat is joule. OK, <clears throat> that's it. See you, Shalom, the next.